Good morning. Oh, that was kind of weak. They did better in first service, and there was about as many of them. Uh, good morning. <laughs> Happy New Year. Woohoo! Thank you. I'm, I'm, I hope everyone had a great New Year. We are so happy that you are joining us in person and that you made the, the effort to come out in the snow. Hopefully you didn't have any trouble getting here. We're also thankful for those of you who are joining us online today. Would you please stand to worship with us? Good morning. We are glad you are here, both in person and online. Um, as you may have noticed, it snowed. You know, I, I know, it's a shocker. It shocked me too. <laughs> I was hoping it wouldn't, but my daughter was hoping so. So, you know, it's like one of those things like, I don't care for it, but my daughter likes it, so it makes her happy, so it makes me happy. Just not when I have to shuffle it. But... Um, we're glad you're here. I know it's a little cool outside, too. Um, I don't like cold. Uh, it makes you wonder why I live in Illinois, but here we are. And I'm glad I get to share it with you fine people. Um, that brings me joy. Um, 
One, I did want to go over. We do have uh, our communion as you come in. If you didn't get it, just wave me down and I can get you a communion on our, my way out. And um, we have our offering plates over there as well. Um, we do have offering envelopes. Um, if you have signed up for them and you haven't picked them up, they're now on the Welcome Center right next to the uh, Christmas cards. So if there's some Christmas cards and your name's on it, go feel free to take them and see who they're from and how much appreciation you are. And don't feel like you're not appreciated if you didn't get a card because we greatly appreciate you. Please don't let that stop you from being feeling appreciated. Um, but um, also, if you wanted offering envelopes, um, just let one of the elders know and we'll uh, get you some envelopes coming. Um, and I do have a couple updates. One, there's uh, some prayers added. Two, one, uh, Lori Merritt, who does Kid City, her, both her sisters have tested positive for COVID. Um, her sister, Sarah, is waiting for the, the cocktail. Um, they're a little shorthanded on those right now. And um, her sister, Sheila, is on a vent. Um, she has shown some improvement, um, but they're still not out of the water and uh, could can use some continued prayers. Um, and speaking of that, Lori is in quarantine because she's seen her si sister, Sheila. And um, so there will be no Kid City Wednesday night. Um, so Wednesday night, Kid City will be canceled. C4 on Wednesday night will continue on. Um, so if any of you C4 kids are here, please come to Wednesday night because we miss you. Um, but uh, just continue to be with them. And um, uh, Linda's sister, Ravina, had tested positive for COVID, but um, they're saying it's not contagious, which is weird to me. But she's uh, on, uh, she has some morphine, not for COVID, for other issues. Um, but just continue to be with, uh, keep Linda and her family in their prayers. I know her brother Freddie came down and he had had knee replacement a couple weeks ago. So he was in pain and they said, you need to go home before the snow. Um, so, but he came for more support. He is home, but uh, just continue to be with the family as uh, Ravina's not doing so great right now. And um, we just wanna encourage them and let them know that we're praying for them as well. Um, there is a thank you in the bulletin, and I wanted to read that. Um, one, it says, thank you for all the prayers and love shown us when we were down with COVID. We are sure that is why our downtime was short. Thanks again, Ralph and Juanita Crook. Um, I know uh, Vince had told me that Ralph won't be really getting out until probably spring, so we probably won't see him here, but I know they're planning on being online watching. Um, and speaking of online, for those who are viewing online or if you are going to view online while we are live, um, I wanted to cover a couple things. We So internet and technology is what it is, and we don't use Wi-Fi while we're streaming. We do a, a direct line to the internet so we can have the best connection that we possibly can. But between internet providers and Wi-Fi at home and everything on that, there may be some glips. Um, we apologize for that, but it's really out of our hands. Now, it does, if you don't watch it live, usually show up and have everything together. Um, but that live stream sometimes with all the other churches and everyone else going live, it just sometimes has those little bit of glyphs with audio or video or things go in and out. Um, that's a chance you take with watching live. Um, we're glad that you're here to watch live with us, but that sometimes happens and there's nothing we can do. We're doing everything possible that we can. And our communion meditation, for those who are online, uh, we have a video with a song and lyrics, it may cut out. Um, so we'll keep it as long as we can, but uh, Facebook may say, hey, we're, you can't show that and we're gonna shut it down. So if it goes out in communion, that's what happened. And we apologize for that, but um, not much we can do with that either. Um, other than that, I believe that we have everything. I hope you all had a wonderful, happy, and good new year and a Merry Christmas. And um, Today's call to worship, it led me to Isaiah 12 in verses 2 through 4, and it says this. It says, Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself, is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day you will say, Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, and make known among the nations what he has done, and proclaim that his name is exalted. 
So as we come here today, let us draw from the well of salvation as he has so given us through Jesus. And with that, I would ask that you all rise and we'll open up in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, you are absolutely beautiful. You are amazing. And we come before your throne here today. I thank you so much for the, the fact that you would even come into this little sanctuary. Lord, as our sanctuary cannot contain you, the, the highest heavens cannot contain you, but you come and join us here as we gather and open your word. Father, I pray that as your word is open, that you, as you speak through Bill and through Rich, Lord, that we would understand and take your words to heart, and Father, and go live those words. Lord, we do lift up those that are on the prayer list, Father, and we uh, take a special note of Lori's sisters, Sheila and Sarah, as they have tested positive with COVID, and Father, to be with Ravina as uh, she's uh, struggling with some pain, and Father, uh, we just ask that you continue to be with both of those families, and Lord, for all the families who are suffering and struggling right now. Father, but what we need is you, and Lord, I pray that you would come be here with us, and Father, I pray that you would be with our Kid City group and our nursery, and Father, that you, uh, you would be ever-present with us today. I'm thankful for the brothers and sisters that we have all across this world, and Father, I pray for those souls who don't know you, as that brings sadness on our heart, and Father, that we are here and say that we would be instruments that could help outreach them. Father, we love you so much. I thank you mostly for your son, Jesus, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
Verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life. 
Before we turn in the Word this morning, a couple of thank yous that I want to pass on. Uh, we received a phone call from a representative with Ignite Church Planters uh, up in the Chicago area. They simply wanted to say thank you. Uh, thank you for helping uh, develop new congregations. Uh, the partnerships that we're with, in with them as, as seeing these congregations grow and the kingdom of God expand and people be one to Jesus. They simply said, we cannot do what we do without us, without you. And they're praying for us. So uh, that's part of what we do through our missions giving. And I thank you so very much that we here at Creve Corps can be a part of expanding the kingdom. Secondly, very much related to that, Casas Por Cristo, uh, Spencer and Kirsten DeLong, my daughter and son-in-law, uh, they simply called and said, we want the church to know how deeply we are touched by their generosity. That Creef Corps Christian Church has been so gracious and so generous, and uh, they are moved by that, and it is helping to see uh, much work be done in, uh, in Mexico and in Guatemala and Nicaragua and the Dominican Republic. So, uh, hey, it's cool that we get to be a part of these things, folks. Thank you for being a part of the kingdom beyond the borders of our own four walls. Uh, let's pray, and then we will turn to the Word. Our Father, we bow before you this morning with hearts filled with awe and wonder and amazement that you hung the stars in place and you know them by name. Father, as we come to your Word today, we pray that your Spirit, the Holy Spirit, would teach our spirits your truth, your wonder, and to know you more. In Jesus we pray, amen. Many years ago, I heard a preacher say that if you accept, if you embrace, if you can believe the first four words of the Bible, in the beginning God, you won't have any problem with the rest of the book. The idea of parting the Red Sea, the idea of a sacrifice for the atonement of sin in Jesus and His subsequent resurrection. Our expectation of His return. The teachings, the miracles, nothing in all of the pages of Scripture will be difficult for you to embrace if you can simply understand, in the beginning, God. You see, as we come to the Bible, Scripture does not set out to prove that God exists. Scripture simply assumes that He exists and that we would understand that. So today, as we begin a new year, I want us to begin in the beginning. And so in Genesis chapter 1, verses that were read for us earlier, we see first of all three words, in the beginning. Now let's be honest, you and I live within the context of time. Yesterday was the beginning of a new year. The day before that was the last day of an old year. If you were to come into my office, I have a clock on the wall, I have a wristwatch on my right hand, I have a Fitbit, which also has a clock on my left hand, I have a clock on my phone, I have a calendar on my phone, I have a pen and paper calendar that I carry with me just about everywhere, and you would think, wow, <laughs> that guy's really trapped in time. Well, aren't we all? You think about going to a doctor's office. Make sure you arrive 15 minutes early. Though if he's an hour and a half late, hey, that's tough. It's on you. You know, that just seems to be the way that it works in our world. We live in time. So when we read these words, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, our minds tend to think of, of, of the start of something, like yesterday was a new year. You need to move beyond that, though. Because it's not that God had a beginning, it's that God is the beginning. God does not exist in time. Time exists in God. And hopefully that makes sense. Because God is the eternal one. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, or for those of us who speak English, I am the A and the Z. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, 
the Almighty. You see, what I hope that we can grasp today is that our concept of God is usually too small. Because our finite minds cannot wrap themselves around the infinite God. But we're talking about God. Who always has been, who always shall be. God who created all that there is. God who in the beginning created the heavens and the earth. God created. How did he do that? Well, when we read through Genesis chapter 1, we understand first of all that he did that simply by the power of his word. Then God said... Those three little words appear in verse 3, 6, 9, 11, 14, 20, 24, and 26 of Genesis chapter 1. Then God said, let there be light, and there was. Then God said, let the waters be separated, the waters of the expanse of the sky where we would have the rains and the water of the oceans, and let the dry land appear, and it did. And God said, let there be vegetation, and boom, there were plants. And one of the things that you need to understand is that God created maturity. When God said, let there be trees, there were trees. Not just a seed in the ground that years later would become a tree. When God created Adam and Eve, do you really think that he placed two newborn infants out in a garden and says, well, hope you can survive? He created a man and a woman. And he told them, be fruitful and multiply, inviting humanity to partner with him in creation. And here we are millennia later. God created by the power of his word. He didn't need a pre-existent substance like you and I do. Hey, you probably know if you've been around long enough that at least in my family we laugh about my ineptitude when it comes to using my hands. I'm not good with my hands. When something needs to be worked on around the house, Gretchen does it, not me. And I'm not ashamed to say so. I'm the kind of guy that if I try to fix something electrical or something plumbing or even paint, I then have to hire someone to fix not only the original problem, but the additional problems that I have now created. That's just me. When I was in junior high, I took shop class. Everybody in my small town took shop class, boys and girls alike. And Mr. Stalwart had us make a toolbox, just a little wooden toolbox, three little compartments on one side, an open compartment on the other side, and a handle, all made of wood. All you had to do was cut it out and nail it together. I passed, barely. And my mother kept that monstrosity until she died, which is when I put it to death as well. It was terrible. But at least I had what? I had wood, I had nails, I had a saw, I had hammer. God took nothing and spoke and it became. Try to wrap your minds around that, folks. This is God. And most people don't have a clue. God is amazing. He created by the power of his word, out of nothing. The, the old Latin phrase that's used by theologians is ex nihilo. He created out of nothing. And I don't maybe necessarily mean to be adversarial. Maybe I am trying to be and I'm just denying it. But as we stand here this morning, we also have to understand that when we walk through Genesis 1, it's going to put us at odds with evolutionists. Evolution, Darwinian evolution, a scientific hypothesis at best. A hypothesis is just a guess, an idea that's been suggested. But it's taught in our schools, it was taught to me, it was probably taught to you, I know it's taught to our children and grandchildren, as scientific theory, as a best guess. Maybe not provable, but 
yeah, this is what it is. Therefore, we have come to believe as a culture and a society that it's fact. When in reality, it's really the response of those who long ago rejected God and had to explain everything that exists and therefore became quite imaginative in the process. You see, when you don't have a creator, how do you have a creation? I don't want to spend a lot of time on that, but if you wrestle with that, if you have questions about that, I want to point you to two resources. The first is a documentary. It's titled Expelled, No Intelligence Allowed. And it's a documentary done by a man by the name of Ben Stein. You may know that name. Ben Stein was actually an advisor to presidents, a, a political man who walked the halls of, of Congress and the White House in Washington, D.C. But he was also an actor. If you remember Ferris Bueller's Day Off, he's the teacher going, Bueller? Bueller? That's Ben Stein. And it just boggles my mind that here he is in Ferris Bueller's day off and here he is in the White House giving counsel to presidents. But that's the guy. Ben Stein does not make this documentary from a Christian perspective. He's not a Christian. He's Jewish by upbringing. And this documentary is excellent. I highly recommend it. Expelled, no intelligence allowed. The second resource, maybe you are familiar with the... Uh, the Ark Adventure in the, in the Genesis uh, Creation Museum in northern Kentucky. Uh, that's put together by a group called Answers in Genesis. They have a website. You can just Google them and come up with it. They have a boatload of materials and information. And if you're wanting to look into things a little bit deeper, I'd send you to those two resources. Expelled, No Intelligence Allowed, and Answers in Genesis. Because it helps us understand what man has done. What man has done. In the book of Romans, chapter 1, the Apostle Paul talks about the descent of man, about the fall of man from knowing God, recognizing God, worshiping God, to worshiping the creation and not knowing God. In verses 18 through 20 of Romans chapter 1, and I'm going to pause a couple times in here, Paul writes, For the wrath of God... Now, right there, some people get hung up because we don't like to think of God being wrathful. Yes, He is. God must deal with ugliness and evil and sin which separates man, His beloved creation, from Him. 